Exodus 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. He received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made a molten calf. And they said, These be, God, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So the first thing you notice here is that Moses is not with the camp. Okay, Moses is in the presence of God. Moses is in the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, Israel is awaiting his word that he's got from the Lord. And while all that happens, is they get, uh, as you see here, they get a little anxious. They get a little uh, impatient. And they move quickly and they go to Aaron. You know, and it and right here is interesting because Aaron didn't even try to resist them when they came. Aaron just listened to whatever they said, basically. I mean, I, I don't know if it's because there were so many of them and, and he's all by himself or what exactly, but it's just like as quickly as, as they forgot, um, as they forgot God, uh, he was quick to forget God. And, uh, it, you know, he's already got an idea plotted here. He's already got something. Uh, <laughs> he's already got an idea to, to do. I mean, it just that quickly that quickly things things went south that fast and um, you know I liken this unto the American church today how uh, they they have forsaken they turned aside from the ways of God and they have made other gods to go before them. They've made their own calf, and they say, "These be thy gods, whatever that may be." Whether they're they're calling that god an Aaron, or maybe their church building, or whatever. And then the sinners, of course, you know, they've got plenty of of, of golden molten calves out there. That they say these be these be thy gods. So it's it's double edged. It's both. You know, we're talking about the congregation in the wilderness here. Uh, God's people turning aside from the ways of the Lord and going after other gods that they've made before themselves. And you've got two designated leaders, and one of them. Uh, you know, impatient, turns aside from the ways of the Lord through easy persuasion. I mean, that's what I have to, to take from this part right here is that he was easily persuaded by the numbers of people coming to him. That he could already form up an idea that quickly to make this molten calf, but hey, you know, maybe you got some other insight that I don't, maybe you can share that in the comments section, I don't know, but, uh, 
it seemed to me like he, he had a quick idea of what to do here. Um, and again, he, just as quick as they wanted to go out a, a side of the way of the Lord, he was just as zealous to do the same thing. So shame on him on, in that regard. Verse 5, And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. So the Bible says, uh, you know, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. But the prayer of the upright, upright shall be his delight. So this is a sacrifice to the Lord. And we know that in... Uh, 1 Samuel 15, it says, Have I have I as uh, great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? For behold, to obey is better than sacrifice rather than hearken to the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, thou hast rejected thee from being king is what Samuel told Saul. Because he went aside, he moved too quickly, he moved hastily. Just like Aaron did right here, he moved hastily. Because the man of God's not present. And Aaron's considered to be a man of God here. But Moses is the main main guy, and uh, you know, he's still in the presence of God. He's seeking counsel from the Lord up in the mount. And he's getting uh, the commandments, and he's ready to come down. But it, it's just, it's double-edged today, but mainly here, it, this is God's people doing this. And, and how, how this relates to today in, in, this, in the time period that we're in, where the so-called visible church uh, and church buildings and, and, and all this stuff, They've turned aside from the ways of the Lord. They've gone after other gods. They've they've built their own calf. They've built their own kingdoms. They've done all these things. They've turned aside from the ways of the Lord. They've become, uh, in this case, Aaron became a respecter of persons. Aaron became uh, persuaded easily by numbers to do the wrong thing rather than to withstand him and do the right thing. And he said, we're going to make a proclamation. We're going to feast to the Lord with this false God. And they rose up early, verse 6, they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, to drink, and rose up to play. And that's just really what I want to hone in on right here. They sat down to eat and to drink, and they rose up to play. And I mean, if that's not America as a whole, but that's that's the that's the church today. They they've sat down. In other words, they got complacent. They sat down, and they stuffed their face with food and drink, and then they rise up. It doesn't say to go proclaim the word of God. It doesn't say to go do the will of God. It says they rise up to play. Which means they rise up to act like the rest of the world. Which means they rise up to conform with the rest of the world. Which means they, they rise up to be a friend of this world and an enemy of God. That's what they do. That's what the church today has done. They've sat down on their lazy behinds. They eat and drink their food, and then they rise up to play. They don't rise up to do the will of God. They don't even think about doing the will of God. They don't think about standing in the gap and making up the hedge. Uh, they don't think about doing nothing like that. They don't think about loving their neighbor as their self. They don't think about the Great Commission. They, they don't think about any of these things because they sit in a land uh, of idleness and fullness of bread abundance of idleness and fullness of bread 
and they're full of pride. That's the churches of today. That's this so-called bride. I hear all people all the time say, oh, be careful, brother. Don't come against the bride. That, that ain't the bride of Christ. That ain't the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is few. You know, just like he said in Deuteronomy chapter number 7, you're a holy people. And then he said that you're few. I've chosen you because, not because you're many, but because you're few. And that's, that's the way it is in this hour right now that we're living in. There's few on that path. There's few that are on the old paths. There's few holding to that way. Not many. And then within the few, there's tares, there's false prophets, there's a lot of imitators, there's, there's a lot of that. And so you got to sift through a lot of stuff right now in this hour. That's why we're in a great falling away. That's why it says that things aren't going to get better in the scripture. It says things are going to get worse. It's all this revival crap. It's not, it's not going to happen. What's going to happen is people are going to wax worse and worse. Is God still going to save? Absolutely. God's still saving people uh, today. Uh, five years ago, I got saved. And then I know brothers that, that have come in uh, even... Uh, you know, even more recently and things like that, but still uh, the fact of the matter is that most are eating and drinking and rising up to play. Most are waxing worse with the world and they're living like the world and they're friends of this world and they're conforming to this world. But that, that right there, they sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. If, if that doesn't describe the so-called 501c3 Babel businesses of today, then I don't know what does. And I don't know that that, that verse right there describes the American people as a whole, the nation as a whole, which I'm going to read from Hosea here in a minute. Uh, where it talks about they they eat and they don't they eat they're never full and they commit whoredom and they never increase because that's on their mind continually eat drink and rise up to play as you see the thumbnail of this video uh, when we were out there preaching in Charlotte the other weekend uh, you know, I had the brother take a picture of it for me because this that that's this this passage has been fresh on my mind for a while, and uh, and you know I just I'm bringing this to you today because it relates with a lot of the things that uh, if you're a preacher of righteousness, if you're standing in the gap and making up the hedge, it, if you're going out there to to where the people are and and you're. Uh, you're being salt and light in this earth right now, then you're seeing exactly the exact same things that I'm, that I'm talking about right now. And you're seeing the scripture right here in front of your face when it comes to the American people and when it comes to the so-called church that we keep, uh, that we keep uh, as a people, as a p true people of God, we keep wanting to defend Instead of doing, instead of going to it and saying, I have something against thee, just like Jesus Christ has something against them. Verse 7 And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have corrupted themselves. So they've turned aside out of the way. They've willfully gone out of the way. They haven't ignorantly gone out of the way. This isn't a sin of ignorance being committed here. This is a willful rebellion going out of the way. And Aaron's leading them to do it. Aaron's leading them to do it. Aaron conformed with it. Aaron didn't even hesitate to conform with it either. He didn't even think about it I mean, if you go back here, we don't see any pause. I mean, nothing. 
It just says, The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Make us gods. And right there immediately, because of the multitude or whatever, he immediately went out, out of the way. He, he immediately conformed to what they wanted. Probably a lot of pressure involved. Probably a lot of people, you know, when a lot of people come to you and, and they tell you, hey, this is how it's going to be. This is, this is the way we're going. This is what we're going to do. And there's a lot of them. And there's maybe one of you, like in this situation right here, it's real easy just to conform and just go along with the program. It's real easy to just be persuaded by the pressure to go along with the program instead of do what's right, instead of withstand it, instead of rebuking those people, you know, as he should have done here. You know, have you lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? I mean, he didn't even hesitate. He didn't even. He didn't even. He didn't even come against it for one second. He just went right along with it. So that shows you the power of pressure. That shows you the power of what the power of numbers can do. And if you're not grounded and settled, you're going to be moved with them. You're going to go with that. If you're not grounded and settled in this word, if if you're not, uh, you know, if you're not on the rock, and if you're not, uh, if you're not walking close to God, you're going to be moved with the multitude. You're going to be moved with it because it's easy. It's just easy to do that, and so we have a perfect example of that right here, Aaron. So in verse 7, they've corrupted themselves. Themselves. You know, I can get into a lot of different things with that, but I'm just going to stick to what I'm, I'm talking about here. But that verse kind of blows it wide open with a lot of, you know, a lot of what's taught in these Babel buildings. Um, because, you know, had this fit to what they teach, it should never say they corrupted themselves because they're already corrupt according to how most people believe today. How could they corrupt themselves when they're already corrupted? But that's for, that's, that's for another video. I just find that interesting because it doesn't just say that once here. It says it in Genesis 6, 12. It says it in Deuteronomy uh, 3. It says it in Deuteronomy 4. It says it in Deuteronomy uh, 10. Uh, over and over again that Israel corrupted themselves. Uh, and we see that man willfully rebels against God. That's what we see right here with Aaron and the multitude. And Aaron's Aaron's going to receive the harsher the harsher penalty, in my opinion, because he's been put in a position of power. He's been put in a position of of leadership. He's been put over people. All right, but he's conforming with the rest of the multitude. You know, instead of sticking to what the word of God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. They received the commandments back in Exodus 20. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And what do they do? They made their own God. They, they want to establish another God. And then they want to bring that and, and offer sacrifices to the Lord. Instead of obeying the voice of the Lord, which says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Verse 8, they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and worship it. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to any graven image. Okay? And have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So they say, These be the gods. God already told him, Thou shalt have no other gods before thee, and thou shalt not bow thyself down to any graven image, and, and bow thyself down to it and worship it. And they've done right here. Verse 9 And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them 
and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Now, as the prophet Moses, uh, you know, he wants to intercede and say, God, no, don't, don't destroy them, God. You know, and, and he, he talks to the Lord. You know, this is this is what Moses is an example of, of what a, a real man of God does. He communes, he's in communion with God. He hears from the Lord. You know, he talks with the Lord. He even pleads and intercedes on others' behalf for the Lord to hold back judgment. Even when he knows those people are wrong and rightfully deserve God's judgment, he still intercedes on their behalf and he tries to, to, to hold God's wrath back from them, as we see here. And he says in verse 12, Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit forever. So he tells God to, to, to turn away his fierce wrath from the people. Right here he says, repent of this evil against thy people. It's not because God uh, is about to commit a sin against Israel. Uh, evil is also described as God's judgment. If you look at Jeremiah 6, uh, Jeremiah 6 and verse, uh, I believe it's, uh, it's 19, where it says, uh, Hear, O nations, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. Because they have not hearkened to my law nor to my words, but rejected them. That's like Jeremiah 6, 15 through 19. You go look that up for yourself. It's a very famous passage that talks about standing in, in, in the way and seeing, asking for the old past, where's the good way, and walk therein. But I've said a watching men over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet, but they would not hearken. All right. Therefore, hear ye nations and know a congregation who is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. That's what I'm trying to get at here. He said, repent of this evil against thy people. What God said in Jeremiah 6, 19, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. What he's talking about is he's talking about judgment. And that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about God committing a sin. All right, and then it says he repented of this evil against thy people, which means he changed his mind, which is a perfect example here to talk about how when we come to salvation, we got to repent from all of our sins. Ezekiel 18.30 says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. Repent and turn yourself from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. So you had to repent, to change your mind, and then you turned from that, from all your sins. All right, so iniquity shall be your room. But right here it just says, repent of this evil. So repent of the judgment you were going to bring upon Israel. Repent of the wrath of the, what does it say? The fierce wrath that you were going to execute upon the Israelites. And then he says, remember, remember the covenant that you made with Abraham and your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob being Israel. All right, verse 14, and the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So he repented of the judgment. He changed his mind. That's all that happened. You see the same thing uh, in Jonah. All right, when Jonah goes in, you're going to be overthrown in 40 days. The Lord says he repented. He repented of the evil that he was going to do to Nineveh because they believed. All right, they believed, which means they obeyed and they repented. They turned from all their wicked ways, as it says in Jonah. 
So you see another example uh, that proves what I'm talking about here. He repented of his judgment. The Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto this people. And you go look at that in Jonah chapter number uh, 3, I believe it is. When Jonah actually goes into Nineveh, he preaches his message. It says the people believed, then they called for a fast, and then they turned from all their wicked ways. All right, and then the Lord repented of the evil he was going to do to Nineveh, which was destroyed in 40 days. So it's the same thing here. The Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto this people. Moses turned and went down from the mount. The two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both of their sides. The one side on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. Here's, here's my favorite part in the whole thing. Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted. And he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp and he said it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery neither it is the voice of them that cry being overcome but the noise of them that sing I do hear so Joshua as Moses is coming down from the mount again Moses was in the presence of God this man was in the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights I mean, he should be coming down and, you know, he, when he, when he finds out, you know, that, that they're singing and he goes to investigate it and finds them doing, I mean, he should just be coming into the camp with a smile on his face and, you know, he should be excited about what he sees, right? I mean, after all, you know, we got to show them the love of Christ, right? So, you know, when he comes in, he should just be glowing with a smile on his face and, and just ready to tell them how much the Lord thy God loves them. But that's not what we see here when this man of God was in the presence of God. Kind of like when John was in the wilderness and, and all of a sudden the word of the Lord comes to John the Baptist and he goes out and he preaches, oh, you generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. All right, he, came, he came with a message of judgment. And he tells him, and John told him to bring forth fruit meat for repentance. This is a little different right here. So the noise of them that sing do I hear. So we have people that made it themselves another God to go before them. They were eating. They were drinking. They rose up to play. Now Moses, the man of God, is coming down from the mount. He's in the presence of God. So we know he's, he's, uh, he's anointed. That's not the cry of battle I hear. That's of the noise of them that do sing. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh into the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. So they were singing. They were dancing. So they ate, they drank, they rose up to play. And what was that playing? What were they doing? Singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. It's a lot like what we see at these rock concerts and these filthy hip-hop concerts and all this other trash that America uh, week in, week out produces at these Roman Colosseums. We see they're eating, they're drinking, and then they're rising up to play. And what is that playing? They're dancing, they're singing. And it says, Moses loves waxed. Hot. No, it says Moses' anger waxed hot. He was angry with it. And I'm sure it didn't come in the form of a smile. I'm sure it came with a form of a face and a forehead like adamant. He was ticked off. And he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. He threw it down to the ground. Boom. The two tables with the commandments on them. And he took the calf which they had made. He took their idol and burned it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. So he took their idol 
and he destroyed it. He burnt it in fire. Just like the law says in the law of Deuteronomy to do with their images, with their graven images. It says to burn them in fire. It says to destroy them, to break down their altars and all that. Moses' anger waxed hot. This man was in the presence of God. He sees this trash going on. He sees them singing and dancing. And his anger waxed hot. He broke down the tablets he threw it out of his hands and he took care of business he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it in fine powder and ground it in powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it and Moses said unto Aaron what did this people what did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? Why'd you conform with them? What did they do to you, man? What turned them? What, what did they say to you to turn you away from the Lord? To bring sin upon them? Built this idol for them? They pressured you and you built this idol for them? And now you're sacrificing unto it now you're dancing and praising and, and lifting up these sacrifices unto the Lord but you're following after these idols it sounds like the Babel building building the Babel building businesses of America today do the same thing in their in their temple they say the temple of the Lord the temple of the Lord are these they worship they worship and they lift up their hands to God in there. All the while, they're, they're, they're exchanging the true God and they're worshiping another God right in front of God. Instead of obeying the voice of the Lord. And that, that's what we have today. Eating, drinking, rising up and play, dancing and singing. But the man of God was angry with it. He wasn't happy with it. He was angry with it. And he wanted to crush their idol. That's how I feel a lot of times when I go out to these events and I, and I stand in the gate of these events, these filthy events, these disgusting events, these detestable events, these abominable events. And I'm angry at what I see. Because I see, the, I see the eating, and I see the drinking, I see the rising up the play, I see the dancing, and I see the singing. And now, and, and, you, and you'll, you'll get a real clear view of why God's angry with the wicked every day. You'll get a real clear view of why God is pissed off every single day with the wicked and how they are and what they do and why God's angry with the churches of America because they don't do anything different because they've conformed they have uh, turned out of the, they've turned aside out of the way and they've conformed with the world and he looked at Aaron who was, who was left in charge while he was gone. And he said, well, how, how did they move you? How'd they move you to cause sin upon them? It's because he didn't stand, he didn't stand firm. He didn't stand firm. He didn't stand upon the word. He got the, he didn't stand upon the word. He know what the he knew what to do was right and he didn't do it. You know, what were they obeying back in Genesis before the law was even given? What were they obeying then? It's always been about the heart. Aaron knew it wasn't right to do what he did. God wasn't winking at it. 
God wasn't winking at this as ignorance at all. Because God wanted to destroy him. And this man of God prayed that God would withhold his wrath, his anger. Prayed and then came down. And he saw it for himself. And you know what he felt? The same thing that God felt. The same exact thing. A holy hatred for sin and wickedness. That's what the man of God felt. And that's how he acted upon it. And Aaron said, verse 22, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me, and I cast it into the fire. And there came out this calf. And then Moses saw that the people were naked. Naked. Again, brings me back to the whole thing. When we stand in the gap at these wicked concerts, these wicked events. I'm using concerts because this is where you'll see the singing. This is where you'll see the dancing. This is where you'll see the nakedness. You see the same thing at the strip club too. At the filthy strip club. And there's a lot of them all over this land. You'll see the nakedness. You'll see those dressed in the attire of a harlot. You'll see those dressed in the attire of a whore. Barely have anything on going into these places. You'll see them dressed like that going into a church building, a 501c3 babble business. You'll see it. All the dance and sing. A lot of these churches I've stood out front of and, and have rebuked. You know what some of these people will say to me? You should come inside. You'd really love the worship. Because that's what they're all about. They're all about their worship. God says, I hate your songs. I hate your solemn assemblies. I let, take, Remove them away from me. Remove them away from me, it says in Amos chapter number five. Remove, I despise your songs. I despise your solemn assemblies. Take them away. Remove them from me. God hates it. They were naked. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. That's what we see. They eat, they drink, they rise up to play, all drunk, all fat and happy. They sing, they dance, and they show their nakedness. But it's not a big deal. I mean, you know, when I see it, I just want to smile. I just want to, I just want to show them the love of Jesus. Well, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Psalm ninety-seven and verse ten says, "Ye that love the Lord, hate evil." The Bible says, "Hate the evil, love the good, establish judgment." Pour that which is evil, cleave that which is good. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. Be not stiff necked. But that's what these people are stiff necked. That's what they are. Hard hearted. That's what they are. Full of pride, abundance of idleness, and fullness of bread. That's what we're full of in the church and the heathen, the sinners of the world. Because the church has learned the way of the heathen. And that's why you can't tell the difference anymore with who's who. You can't tell the difference anymore. Even when it comes down to those who are actually in the gap, you can't tell who's who anymore. 
Those who go out and, and even oppose it, you can't tell who's who anymore. A lot of people are strengthening their hand. A lot of people are saying unto those wicked people, unto these people who do this, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And they strengthen the hands of the evildoer that none doth return from their wickedness. They are all unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Because with lies you've made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. And you strengthen the hand of the wicked that none doth return from their wickedness by promising them life. By promising them life. But if you would have stood in God's counsel, you would have caused my people to hear my words and turn them from their wickedness. Turn them from their wicked way that they may live. Well, we don't have enough of that today. You know what Moses said in verse 26? Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who's on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. That's what I want to be like. I want to be like Moses. I want to stand in the gate. And I want to say, who's on the Lord's side because I'm not going to conform with wickedness I'm not going to conform with the world I'm not going to conform with hypocrisy I'm not going to conform with iniquity I'm not going to conform with lies I'm not going to conform to go after other gods and serve them I'm going to stand on the Lord's side and I'm going to serve him and I'm going to serve him in spirit and in truth because that's what this man Moses did and the rest is history. They went through and they slaughtered. They slaughtered those disobedient children. They slaughtered those rebellious children who turned aside and went out of the way. And that's what's going to happen to those who turn aside and go out of the way. They're going to get slaughtered. They're going to get destroyed. And you're living in a time where that is ever so present today. So that's why you got to know who's who. That's why you got to know who you labor amongst. That's why you got to walk in agreement with people. You can't just yoke up with anybody. You got to find those who are on the Lord's side, who are walking upright, who are walking holy, who are living just, who are sold out to do the Lord's work, who are about the work. They're not eating and drinking and rising up and playing and singing and dancing and acting a fool. They're about the work. Those are the ones on the Lord's side. Who are my mother? Who are my brethren? They that hear the word of God and do it. Whosoever shall do the will of God. These people turned aside and went out of the way quickly. And their overseer, Aaron, they got him to follow right along in suit with them. Because of pressure. Because of numbers. Because of whatever it was. They got him. And Aaron paid for it. Aaron paid for it. But that's what we have before us today. That's That's... That's what the church has become. No different than the world. No different than the world. It's the same thing. Same thing amongst preachers who strengthen the hands of the wicked. You got to find those who are on the Lord's side and you got to run with them. You got to find those who are all in to follow Jesus Christ. You got to weed out the bad. You gotta get them out. Because a lot of people, they're singing, they're dancing. They're acting a fool.
They're naked. They're shameful. They're stiff necked. They've corrupted themselves. They've made other gods to go after. You know, for the church, they're buildings of God. They're buildings of God. Their worship music's the God. They've left off this. They've left off this. This has become less important. This right here has become less important. You're going to have to decide for yourself what's more important. You're going to have to decide for yourself who's on the Lord's side. And you're going to have to find those people and run with them. Because... Uh, as time moves on, and even in this year, I believe there's going to be, it's going to be even more evident who's who towards the end of this year. When the election stuff comes, when all that stuff comes rushing in, you're going to see more and more who is who. You're going to see more and more who's really about serving God and who's not. wanted to end with Hosea 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. Thou shalt not thou, that thou shalt be no priest to me, saying thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on iniquity, on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. For they saw, they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase, because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms has caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring from under their God. And that's you, America. That's the American church, and that's the people of this nation. They've gone a whoring from underneath this God and away from him. And that's why judgment's going to be so harsh on this land. That's why it's going to come. I'm harsh. Read it, heed it, obey it. Serve the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Find those people. Find those who are on the Lord's side and run with them. Separate yourself from those who are going after other gods. For those who are going who are saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, and from those heathen who are trying to draw you back into the world. God bless you. Amen.